don't have anything prepared to tell you other than this has been a three-year journey for us. Those of us who kind of discovered what was going on with uh, what was going on with the, the rail corridor. Uh, it actually started. There were other people. Actually, the people behind Greenway had been had been involved with this. For me, it started with the Real Del Mar Improvement Association. I'm a board member, and they said, "Go find out what's happening with the train." And I thought it was a tourist train at the time. And I went to a government agency meeting, invitation only. So there were ten people there: people from Kansi, the mayor's office of Watsonville, and things like that. And it started out with how many people. Uh, Highway one is a disaster, or, you know, terrible. And everybody raises their hand, and so do I. But then I saw the numbers on it, and uh, the numbers were really low. And then I stopped. And I said, "What effect does this have on Highway one?" This and the RTC person said, "None." And I said, "So why are we talking about this?" And I won't go into longer detail, but that's kind of what got me started. And then. As I brought that up, it was, well, if you're going to be against the train, what are you going to do with the corridor? And then uh, some other people were talking about making a trail. And I went, oh, okay, we'll be for trail. So right now, our goal is to turn this, uh, the rail corridor, into a trail. Gail McNulty is representing, is, is, uh, representing Greenway in this talk. And I will be running the computer to time the slide projection and all that kind of stuff. Anything you want to say? Thank you, Carrie. Carrie helped um, greatly in putting the presentation together tonight. And actually, Tyler Fox is going to come to our official intro. So, thank you all for coming. This is going to be a super exciting night, a lot of fun. There's going to be raffles. I had a really beautiful, eloquent speech, um, but my girlfriend left it at home. So. Wow. <laughs> 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 She's joking. Love you. Um, <laughs> Just real quick, um, I grew up in this community. Um, I'm the uh, CEO and founder of Santa Cruz Waves. Um, and I've crossed the, this rail corridor hundreds of times. I've rode my bike along it, um, getting to surf, going to friends, how, friends' houses. And I've seen firsthand how narrow it is and how basically it just doesn't make sense to put a train and a trail on this one small corridor. Um, there's so many other um, bits of information that have made um, me feel this way about Greenway and about having just a beautiful, simple trail. And you'll see that in the slides to come. Um, but I really think this is a common sense issue once you learn all the facts. And uh, I'll let these guys take it from here. And, and hopefully you come away from tonight with a little more information than you have before. So. Enjoy. Raffle to come. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Um, my name is Gail McNulty, and I'm executive director with Santa Cruz County Greenway. And we are very excited to be here in APCOS tonight. We are officially kicking off our community tour. We'll be right here in APCOS tonight. Um, so, we have a choice. Rail or trail. If you've ever walked along the rail corridor, um, you realize that it's actually not all that wide, and the tracks sit right in the middle. So um, trying to build a trail next to those tracks really will be a challenge. That being said, who doesn't love trains? I mean, raise your hand if you've been on a fabulous train in Europe, in New York, anywhere. I mean, trains are great. Why wouldn't we want a train here in Santa Cruz? I mean, absolutely. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. I have amazing childhood memories of riding the train downtown. Um, I lived in Washington, D.C., New York City. I lived for six years in New York City and didn't have to own a car. And I have to tell you, I loved that time. I commuted daily on the subway on Metro North. If we could have a train here in Santa Cruz and it would work for us, I would be a huge proponent of it. I really would. Um, Okay, so, for starters, why does a train not make a whole lot of sense for Santa Cruz? First of all, all U.S. commuter rail, daily commuter rail systems have populations, metro populations of a million or more. Um, they're all connected to major metropolitan areas. So if we look at this chart, the middle line here, the um, 1.5 million, gets you almost halfway through. So that's, actually, I'm sorry, the, the, the 3 million, 
million mark gets you about halfway through the 34 existing commuter rail systems. Then we get over here and we see, then we've got vast majority over 2 million, and then down over here we've got a couple straggling in the million mark, and then we see Santa Cruz County. <laughs> Santa Cruz County we have um, a population around 262. Thousand. Even if we were to grow, even if we were to grow to a population of 300,000, a train would not make sense for our community. We do not have the tax base to support a train. So as much as it sounds like a fabulous, shiny, wonderful idea, it doesn't make sense for our county. The smart train. I just last week went up to Sonoma Marin because we hear often our local train proponents like to talk about the smart train because it is local. <laughs> It's a rail with trail. It's up in Sonoma Marin, and, um, and, it, and they compare it often to us. Now, here's the thing. The combined population of Sonoma and Marin is around 800,000. And the smart train, although it doesn't quite get there yet, ultimately will connect to a ferry to get to San Francisco. So, I mean, it is a major metropolitan area. Another big difference between the smart train and us is their corridor. This is something I learned when I was up there this weekend, I wouldn't have known otherwise, is very wide and open. So like when we talk about our corridor, we have all these, it's tree line, it has valleys and all of these impediments to building a trail. Theirs is kind of in the middle of a big wide open valley. They didn't have to take down trees. They didn't have to excavate. They didn't need retaining walls. There's a lot of room. And even with all of that, they're running out of money. So just like us, we had our Measure D where our train groups came on, Greenway supported it, all these people supported Measure D. Measure D sets aside money for a train and a trail. They had something called Measure Q. Well, I, actually, Measure D doesn't cover a train. It covers studies and track repair. Their Measure Q actually did pay for a train, and it also paid for their trail, or so they thought. But the, um, bike, the bike advocates up there are actually feeling pretty disappointed. They had to run a campaign about a year ago that was the Save the Smart Path campaign. Because what happened is it was like Measure D, Measure Q was a sales tax measure, um, and they hit a recession. So sales tax was not what they thought it was going to be. They didn't have as much money as they thought they were going to have. They had to cut back how much of the train they would build. And then they ended up taking their separate pools of money and combining it into one kind of big fund. So the, tra the trail money basically disappeared. So the train advocates up there are pretty disappointed because, well, the train is running, and people are riding the train, and people love the train. The, only a small portion of the bike path has been, has been built. And I will tell you, the train, for those people that are able to get to and from work on it, is great. You can get a glass of wine, you can get a beer, you can get a cup of coffee and a snack. It's terrific. Unfortunately, it doesn't serve the majority of the population, and the majority of people are still sitting in gridlock traffic on 101 every day. So is it an equitable solution? I don't know. Um, so smart train, not very much like us. Um, so we have been studying rail a long time here in Santa Cruz County, studying actually since 1989. I believe there's been eight studies over the year. The most recent one was done in 2015. That study, um, early on, one of the first things they did was rule out an electric train because it was simply too expensive. So they were talking about 60 diesel trains per day going up to 40, 45 to 60 miles per hour every 15 minutes through Aptown. Think about how you'd like that. Um, absolutely no effect on Highway 1 traffic. That's a quote from Karina Pushnik. But in their study, it shows um, you know, 14 miles per hour sitting in traffic now. Once the commuter rail goes in on the rail corridor, still 14 miles an hour sitting in traffic during rush hour times. Um, low predicted ridership from Aptos, 200 round trip, from Watsonville, 220 daily. Not a lot of people are going to be able to get to and from where they need to go on this train. Um, we have currently about 220,000 cars a day on Highway 1, so roughly um, one, two out of 100 cars coming no, off the highway. No, no 0.1%. That's one out of a thousand. Okay, one out of a thousand cars. So even less than that. So. Um, trains, the train isn't going to get people to and from where they need to go. The majority of our major employers, we've got, you know, well, you know, also people want to get to Pacific Avenue, but we've got Dominican, we've got the University, Cabrillo College, Costco. Our major employers 
don't sit close to the corridor. And trains are expensive. When we talked about that earlier slide of the size of metropolitan areas that support major train systems, there's a reason for that. You need a large gas space to support a train. And a train here would cost, you know, 500 to 600 million dollars over 30 years. Think about how that money might be used. We have no funding for a train now. So that would be a whole other tax measure. And it's not money that's currently allocated to transportation. So think about other needs that our county has. We have CalPERS. We have retirement that's going to need to be paid. We have schools that need stuff. We have a lot of other needs. Do we really want to funnel that amount of money in our community to a train system that isn't going to help gridlock and isn't going to get people where they need to go? I don't think so. Okay, so Highway 1. On Highway 1, Caltrans data tells us that once you get to the Highway 117 interchange, 60% of that traffic is going to Silicon Valley. Those people are not helped by a train on our corridor from Davenport to Watsonville. Bus versus train. Our bus system, our metro bus system, we do have a transit system here in Santa Cruz. And actually, Greenway is a supporter of transit. We want working transit. I I'm a mother, I have three children, I have to tell you, I am scared to death of climate change. And I really want people to get out of cars and onto bikes and onto public transit. But a train doesn't make sense for our community. What would make sense is to stop all that train energy and put it into fixing our metro bus system. The Unified Corridor Study is a study that the Regional Transportation Commission is currently doing. It's looking at three corridors, the rail corridor, so Cal Freedom and the Highway Corridor. And it's looking at different solutions that we could combine to make, to give people easier ways to get around the county. Our metro bus system and the blue lines on this map represent our metro bus system. It already moves more than three times the people that the 2015 rail, rail study predicted moving in its best case scenario. And that was the 60 drinks a day scenario, okay? So we're already moving more people on the buses. And what's happened in other communities that have invested into rail when they already had a working bus system, LA is a really good example. We always hear the story about LA. We don't want to be like LA. They took up their tracks. It was a travesty when LA took up their tracks. They had a working streetcar system. They took it up, and that was a travesty. But they took that up in the 70s, years past. Now they're reinvesting back into rail. And do you know what's happening? When they reinvested into rail, A, there's a kind of set pool of money, even on a place the size of LA. So, so the transit funds kind of went down. So now you're trying to fund two major systems. Then, meanwhile, you have to take some of those buses that were currently getting people to and from where they needed to go, and you have to shift their routes to get people to and from the train, because the train's one corridor. It doesn't go close to where everybody needs to go. When they shifted those routes, all of a sudden, some of the people that were relying on the buses were no longer served. And those buses are a social service. They were probably moving the people that needed transit more than anyone else in their community. Now what LA is seeing, now that they're trying to invest in rail and buses, and this is happening not just in LA, but in many, many, many cities across the US, their overall transit ridership is steadily declining. The buses were working, now they're not because they're having to shift between the bus and the train. So, Santa Cruz, we've got our lovely blue bus routes that get people currently where they need to go. These are the places people are going. They do not sit close to our rail corridor. The vast majority don't. I mean, sure, if you want to go on the west side, the train might help you. If you want to go, you know, maybe right there in Pleasure Point, there are a few places you can get. If you're going to the boardwalk, great, the train's a good deal, but it's not going to get you to most of the places you need to go on a daily basis. So what's wrong with the current plan? This is actually a picture um, that was recently put out promoting the current plan. This is a vision of rail with trail it could look like, or rather, it's a vision that they're showing us, of, they're trying to make us believe rail with trail would look like. There are a lot of people in this community that are buying this rail with trail plan. And, and, and you can see why it doesn't look that bad until you really start to think about the picture. So first of all, on this corridor we've got um, you know, someone in a wheelchair, some children on bikes, a person walking their dog. The person that needs to get somewhere on a bike is not going to be on this path. We see it on West Cliff, we see it on East Cliff. They're wonderful assets for our community, but if you need to get somewhere fast on a bike, you're biking in the street. And we're currently one of the most dangerous places to ride a bike in California. 
that's not going to change with this path. Okay, it's also, this path also is going to take so much money, we'll get into that later, that it's not going to leave us money to add extra bike infrastructure. I mean, one of the things Greenway wants to do is add, we, we want to save a bunch of money so that we can build a protected bike network, not just the rail corridor, but protected bike, bike paths that separate people from cars that go from the rail corridor to the university, to the college, to the hospital, to all the places that people need to go. Okay, so, and here's another problem with this picture, and this is some of, quite honestly, the fake news that's being promoted. <laughs> another part of the problem is, look at where the fence lies. There, there will need to be a fence. Okay, and we'll see a fence later of what the fence looks like up in Sonoma and what probably our fence will end up looking like. But, but look at where it sits next to the rail corridor. This actually would need to be eight and a half feet out from the center of the track. Okay, so, so this doesn't fit. This is a fake picture of what rail with trail could look like. It's not real. Um, here we go with the fence. So this is the Sonoma Smart Corridor. This is what their fence ends up looking like. Um, again, we're seeing these nice pictures of these little wooden fences, but the um, that if a train's ever actually running on those tracks, I mean, we might be able to get away with the wooden fence if the tracks are sitting empty, but if there is actually ever a train running on those tracks, we're going to need a much larger fence, and it's going to have to sit at least eight and a half feet from the center line, and that depends on how fast those trains are moving. The faster the trains go, the farther the fence is to get away to keep the people from the train and keep them safe. So, and also the fences are going to separate our neighborhoods. Um, as you can see, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get to the beach or get to someplace you're trying to go. And, again, we've got our narrow corridor. We have thousands of trees along that corridor. We have lush green hillsides. Some of it's ivy, I know it may not be what we want, but at least it's green, okay? In order to try to squeeze a trail in next to those tracks, it's going to involve massive excavating projects, huge retaining walls, and, and none of this is included in the current Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Plan. So they've got the, we'll get to the cost later, but it, 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 it's just another sign that it's going to be much more expensive than they think it's going to be. Detours onto dangerous streets. So Capitola Trestle is one of the most obvious ones. The Rail with Trail, or the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Plan, um, puts up a new trestle next to almost every bridge in our county. So almost every time the rail line comes to a bridge, and that's 24 major ones, I think 37 if you're looking at the small ones, um, that bridge would sit empty with the Rail with Trail Plan, and we would put a new bridge next to it. So these major ones are priced out at estimated around a million dollars. Um, Capitola, there is no way to put a bridge next to the historic trestle. The Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Plan literally says something to the effect of maybe someday through some miracle of engineering, someone will figure out how to delicately place the footings and phrasing, but in there to make a separate trestle work. But right now, the plan for Capitola is a major detour down Cliff Drive, Stockton, Capitola, Monterey, up to Park. I mean, imagine trying to do that in a wheelchair. You know, I mean, this is not an ADA compliant, um, accessible, friendly path. And it's also not a path that's going to be something that children are going to safely get to school on. New Brighton Middle School. I mean, they're proud of their biking population, their biking um, statistics. They do bike to school day, I think, once a month. And I was speaking with the principal there recently, and they, they have quite a few bike to car conflicts a year. I forget the actual number, but it, it was enough to make me, as a mother, um, really fearful. And, and it would be great to see more of our children able to bike to and from school and skateboard and walk. Dale, can I add, it's six total miles out of the 32. About one-fifth of it is on the street. Yeah. So this is a small portion, but just want you to know there's six total miles. Yeah, there's another there's major one down in Watsonville. To get through the Watsonville Toulouse, you have to put up seven new bridges. So imagine, A, the money to do that, and B, trying to get the environmental approval to put up seven new bridges through the wetland area. You know? um, so in order to put in either a train or a trail, we're going to be removing most of those tracks. Now Barry in the back of the room, Barry's here, and I'm sure he will tell you, oh, we don't need to do that. The trail plan says we don't need to remove most of our tracks, and Barry, you're welcome to say that when we get to that. But the reality is, if we want to move a train at 10 miles an hour, we might be able to get by with some of those tracks. When we get up to higher speeds, if this actually were to be a passenger rail train that was going to get people someplace fast, we would be replacing it all of it. I mean, the smart corridor, um, I don't think we had a picture of the corridor, but it's, it's all brand new cement ties and brand new steel rails. So, 
and, and actually, in removing the tracks, if we were to rail bank and remove the tracks, we can actually recycle the steel. So in truth, we come out ahead if we take the tracks out. It's not a whole lot. I think it's 100,000, something like that. But we would come out at least a little bit ahead, probably, if we were to recycle the tracks. Um, okay. So transportation is rapidly evolving. We all, you have your iPhone probably with you, or a smartphone of some, smartphone of some sort. Ten years ago, those didn't exist. That's where we are with transportation right now. We are in a transportation revolution. I mean, I, I have a neighbor in Bonnie Dune that's currently working on the flying taxi. You know, I mean, I, I don't know when that'll be out, but I, but but it's that's where we are. You know, we are evolving. This is something we have right now. Barry might tell you about Daisy. And Daisy is cute, she's sweet, she is currently running on the tracks. You can actually go, there's a website for Daisy where you can go and you can reserve her and you can take some friends on the rail corridor. And so it is, this is currently running our tracks. We're doing something running on our tracks right now. Um, Ollie over here is a driverless minibus. It's all electric, totally green and friendly. It has actually, it, you can see a little ramp come down and it's wheelchair accessible. These are being tested right now, San Francisco, San Jose, all around us in Northern California. They're, they're in active use in Dubai, places around the world. I mean, they're still in the testing phase. Wouldn't it be great if we could test one of these here? I mean, this kind of thing, we're, Greenway is open to the idea of small scale transit solutions. If they could interact safely with bikes on the corridor, we're happy to see if that can happen, if that can work. Um, we personally think that something like this is going to potentially help more people, not only because it well, <laughs> looks a little more sleek and modern, but, but also because it connects with the tracks. I mean, Daisy is kind of stuck. She can go up and down the tracks. She's fun. But Ollie can go off the tracks. Ollie can get you to your appointment or get you someplace you need to go. I mean, this is in my mind, probably more of the direction that the future is going. Rail banking. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the fact that rail banking is not real, it doesn't work. Well, we finally think to carry have definitive proof that rail banking, um, well, we've known all along that rail banking is real. I mean, what rail banking is, is a law started in 1989 that allows communities to um, make a deal with a rail operator to rail bank the corridor, which means the rail banking piece itself is just the legal preservation of the easements, which means that the parcels would not go back to individual owners. We're re re retaining that as a solid corridor. Um, some, some tracks are rail banked and never, haven't had a, train built, a trail built on them at all. Some of those have returned to rail service. Ones that have been made into a trail, we hear people say, oh, well, once you make it into a trail, we'll never be able to put a train back in. But we have proof, positive. But that's not true. Um, it's more than September one. 5th. It's more than one rail. Well, yeah. one for the passenger rail that we know for sure. But September 5th, 2017, Washington, D.C. Actually, I think this is in the suburbs of Maryland. But it's the Georgetown Branch Trail. If you've ever been on the trail next to the Potomac, it is an old rail trail. And they are taking a portion of that and they are closing it down for four to five years to extend the purple line of the Washington, D.C. metro. So that is happening. It's happening right now. Proof positive that if you rail bank a trail, build a trail, and later on decide you want a train, it can be done. Um, and they're going to go back and they're hoping to then build a path next to that train. Does rail banking mean you're just keeping the easement and you can return it to? Exactly. It, it's basically a legal deal with the rail operator so that you would yeah, maintain the easement so the parcels wouldn't divide up. Yes. Um, so Greenway, a better way. This is our little, okay, our vision is simple. A bicycle path, a walking path, safe and well lit, beautiful and green, useful, fun, and healthy, a greenway for all of us. Um, greenway is affordable. So first of all, we've got this nice image. Right down here, the green, 60 million is what um, Nelson Nygaard estimated it would cost to build up our version of the trail. Um, to figure in 10,000 for new design docs, the new EIR, pay back our Proposition 116 funds. It brings us up to $81 million. Over here we have, again, $127 million is what the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Plan estimated to build their trail. We now know, based on Segment 7 and the retaining walls that we mentioned earlier, Segment 7 on the west side 
um, is one of the most easy sections of the tra trail to build. But when they got to La Barranca Park, which is the corner of California and Bay, they found out that, hey, there's a massive excavating project, a big major retaining wall that we weren't anticipating having to build. That, they've now broken that part of the trail into two segments. They're pushing forward as fast as they can with segment 7A, I think it's called. Segment 7B is on hold indefinitely because it's over twice what they Gail, thought it was Gail, going to can be. you just explain that segment 7 is, is Santa Cruz between the boardwalk and natural bridges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the second and, half of and the And it's as easy as you can get, if, if, at least in theory. Yeah. Until they go, oh, gee whiz, there's a difficult spot here, and it tripled the cost of the construction of the trail for that whole uh, segment seven. And again, there's okay. no excavating at all included in the $127 million. And if you know that quarter, you can think about how many these types of things that are going to come up, whether it's excavating, returning walls, mitigating drainage ditches, these types of things are going to come up over and over again. It only gets more and more difficult. So it's easy to assume that that 127 million could easily turn into 200 million. Who knows? Um, again, to establish rail service, 176 million. Over 30 years, another 360 million. That brings us to getting close to 700 million, and that's if it were to come in at budget. And we know that these major, you know, major um, engineering projects seldom come in at budget. The smart train came in much higher than budget, and um, and, and, and they've only managed to build a small portion of what, well, most of it, but not all of what they were hoping to build. Um, so Greenway is eco-friendly. We showed a picture a little bit ago showing the beautiful lit path and all of this. That's, that's our dream. That's where we ultimately hope to be. We believe that when we build the right safe biking infrastructure in Santa Cruz County, with the population of Santa Cruz County, with who we are, we believe that many, many, many people who aren't currently riding bikes, you know, whether it's just to go shopping or to get to work, for, to get to school, are going to choose bikes when it's safe to do so. Walking, wheelchairs, all of that. Um, but we're not expecting to do the perfect trail in the beginning. What we really want to do right now is we want our county to implement solutions that we can afford to implement. We want real change and real solutions. Not a fantasy train with invisible riders. We want a trail that, you know, let's build a trail we can afford to finish. Let's do it as soon as we can. Let's take the $40 million that's sitting there, the 8% of Measure D that's allocated to continue studying rail and repairing empty tracks, and let's build that bike network with protected bikes. And then let's take a reasonable amount of money. Our metro bus system currently needs 62 new buses. Why don't we think about taking some of that money that we're dreaming about the train and buy green buses, you know, battery electric buses. We can make the bus system work better. We can make it get faster. We need to put the energy and the will into doing that. So Greenway is simple. You know, pick up the tracks and all of a sudden you know, we're going to use our bridges. It's, it's going to be the easy way forward and the eco-friendly. We're going to save our trees. Um, simple solutions. Our bridges. You know, it, it, the, the Capitola trestle, to try to make the Capitola trestle safe for a train would be incredibly difficult. But to make it safe for a bike path is much, much easier. I mean, and we, communities all over the United States have done it. We can look to them, how they've retrofitted their old rail bridges to suddenly be safe for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, safer path, here's an artist's rendition of what the Capitola trestle could look like if we were to use it for our path. Greenways recreation, families, transportation. We really do think that, especially with e-bikes coming out the way that they are. Um, Davis, California. Davis, California, in 1967, had the foresight to put in the what, what we believe are some of the first protected bike lanes in the United States. They now are the U.S. Cap bike capital of the world. And, and, and they, they, they did all of that because they knew that their university was growing. They knew there were going to be more students and they didn't want more cars. So the student, the um, Davis City Council partnered with the university and they made a plan. They're like, we're going to make it as safe as possible to bike in the city of Davis and then we want you to market to your students, come to school with a bike only. So here are our students, they do ride the buses. Let's make the buses better for them with e-bikes. I mean, we are different from Davis, right? Because Davis is much flatter. But with e-bikes, that all evens out. 
If you've ever raised your hand, if you've tried a pedal assist bike. I mean, they changed who can ride bikes. You are still getting exercise. A pedal assist bike is just doing some of the work for you. It's like when you're at the gym and you choose how much exercise you want to get on a stationary bike, that's an e-bike. You choose how much you want to get, and all of a sudden you can get up that hill. But you're not going to um, need to on the corridor because the you don't need to on the corridor because the corridor is um, the corridor is flat and continuous. So you're, you're right that one of the beautiful things about building on the railroad tracks is that it's incredibly easy to build an ADA compliant path and a path that works for every fitness level because railroads when they're put in are put in at no more than a three percent grade. So if we stay on our trestles and don't do those major detours down into town and that type of thing, this path will be a path for everyone. Yeah, we are. Okay, Greenway is health. <laughs> Greenway is community. Think about the small little coffee stands and things like that that might sprout up along the way. Um, this is at Aptos. Downtown Maybe it's evolving. And this is this is an artist's rendition of what Greenway might look like in Aptos. And we think that this will be happier Aptos. Especially we know that Aptos is worried about the um, added traffic that might be coming with the Aptos Village project. Um, Improving the bike path is a great way to help mitigate some of that because we, we, we've got your three trestles and all of this. I mean, it'll be a wonderful way to get around town. If, if you live anywhere within walking or biking distance to downtown, I mean, imagine hopping on your bike to go to After House Barbecue for dinner or canteen. You know, it, it's just, it would be a wonderful way to spend an evening. So, okay, and I'm going to invite Chris and Paige up. Good job. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> And we were both born here, born and raised here in Aptos, and we are fortunate enough to own a home here in Aptos, and we also run our small business here in Aptos as well, and we support the Greenway. So, we all know, how many of us know where this is? Nice. 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 Mars, right? That's our first uh, trail, rail turn trail. Did everybody know that's a rail trail? No. Nope. It's a rail trail. Right? How many of us enjoy that? <laughs> all the time, right? Yeah. Something I, I've been thinking about it as a kid, I used to ride my bike all over this town, all over all the time, and I, I never do it anymore. And it's just, it's really dangerous. How many of yourselves can see you on a, like a nice summer day, getting on your bike and riding down SoCal to go to Capitola Village, <laughs> SoCal, SoCal Drive, or McGregor for that matter? One, one person, right? Two people. But if if this corridor was right there, how easy would it be for us all to just get around town? Get to Capitola, like if no don't no parking, no no issues with the parking. It, it'd just be, anyways. Uh, it's safe. It's affordable. Like thinking about the future and how we're gonna pay for all of this, and our my our kids if we ever get there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like as as a small business owner with employees, thinking about trying to give my employees a raise and, and get them ahead, and knowing that that all of, all of this is going to equal more taxes for all of us, it's really hard to, to make sense of it all financially. And so I, I guess call to action, e email the Board of Supervisors, let them know what you think, regardless of whether you're trained or train and trail or trail only, like thank you for coming and, and educating. Let's create a discussion in our community. Let's get involved. Some other things you can do after you leave tonight is uh, there are three ways that you can take action now. You can sign our petition, which Monica is over here in this corner. Um, you can share our petition. Um, check out our website and share our petition. You can sign the petition on the website if you can't get to it tonight. Um, and email the RTC and let them know that you support the Greenway and let them know why you support the Greenway. And take some of the information you got tonight and 
Topic friends. Topic friends. Can we keep that on? I didn't disconnect it. And then if you all have questions, Gail and Gary are doing it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to send you a Q&A, and actually, we're going to put that back up in a minute. And there is on our website, the bottom thing right here, it says um, sccgreenway.org forward slash email. We actually have a little pre-written email. So the RTC can be emailed at info at our, um, sccrtc.org, um, or you can go to this little pre-thing here, and then we've got a little pre-formatted email, we would love for you to personalize it, make it your own, share why it is, if you do feel like Greenway is a good vision for Santa Cruz, Cruz County, why that is. But um, the RTC needs to hear from you. If you, if you want this to be the case, and, and again, we're going to have the Q&A, um, we're the alternate plan. We are right now climbing up Niagara Falls trying to make this happen. Um, it is not the plan of record, so um, they need to hear from you, and if this is something you're passionate about at the end of tonight, if this is something you want to help us spread the word on, please do. We need as many people in the county as possible to speak up for this. Um, yes, Judy. Uh, Gail, I'm uh, wholeheartedly supporting Greenway, but I would like you to speak to the fact that Ecology Action Network and the major bike shops in town all support rail and trail. Why is that? Well, the major, many of the major bike shops are supporting us. Um, some of the larger ones have not come to that yet, but it is a good question, June. Thank you. Um, I think it's important for the audience to be clear yes. on that because when you go on the web, website, you see the support that rail trail has by Sierra Club, Ecology Action Network, and four of the very prominent the bike land shops. trust by and Santa Cruz trust. County. So it, yes. it, it's like, well, now what's why is that? The, the right. really so good question. Sense. Yes, um, and so that largely stems from the fact that when the corridor was purchased in 2012, they used Proposition 116 funds. They drew up that Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Plan in 2013, and everybody was excited about the idea of having a rail trail. When friends of the rail Trail first formed. Let me interrupt one second. So she talked about Proposition 116 funds, which require that the county, in using those funds, has a passenger rail on the trail, I mean, on, on the corridor. Right. What is not said is that the county bypassed using the California Con uh, Coastal Cons Conservancy that had $10 million sitting there to use basically for, for a recreational trail. Mm -hmm. So the county at that point, with a state ideology of pro-rail, chose to go that route. The RTC is a state-funded agency and is not county-supported. And so they really marched to that drum, and that's what happened. Set the tone. Once you say that you have to have a train, then everybody has to march in step with that narrator. And that's what happened early on. Well, and, and, and recently, too, you may have, if anyone is following the Sierra Club or um, Campaign for Sensible Transportation, there are two events planned. Um, the Sierra Club has an event planned on March 7th, I believe. Is March, March, March 8th. Okay, Barry's got handouts on it, so he can share that with you. Um, and the Sierra Club, here's actually another thing that's very important to know. These organizations, we're a small town. And in some ways, we're kind of by Money is the word. We are a small town. <laughs> so some of our leaders, for instance, a man named Mark Missity Miller, a friend of Barry. Mark, Barry, and Bruce Sawhill are some of the biggest proponents of the train. They're on the board, the Friends of the Rail and Trail Board. Mark Missity Miller is on the executive board of the Sierra Club. He is presenting at this conference on the 8th. So he will be presenting the vantage point of the Friends of the Rail Trail to the Sierra Club. The Sierra Club is an environmental organization, and one might think that they might want to choose the path that would save the trees and the green hillsides and that type of thing, and the path that in reality will make the biggest difference for climate change, because a train that's never built won't help climate train change. A tourist train that brings more people to our community and gets no one off the highway will not help climate change. Um, and you know, a freight train that's moving a little bit of freight in our corridor will not help climate change. And before we leave tonight, if there's time, I will mention a little bit more about the freight aspect of all of this, which is something that's coming into play very sharply right now. 
Um, but at any rate, Mark Vicity Miller is the chair of, not the chair, but he's on the executive committee of the Sierra Club. He's also the chair of our planning commission. He's also the chair of our um, His wife is chamber chair, of commerce. Chair of the land His trust. wife is yeah. the chair of the land trust. Okay, so this is this is kind of how things roll in our county. When it comes to um, Bike Santa Cruz County and Ecology Action, they're both great groups. I mean, they are bike advocacy groups, but they get some of their funding from the RTC. So I mean, bike well, to school day, bike to work day. That's the yeah. that's bike to school day, bike to work day, um, open right. streets. These things get funding from the RTC. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's also right. important to realize that the Friends of the Rail and Trail started out as Friends of the Rail Trail. And yes. most people, when they think of a rail trail, think of a rail to trail conversion. 90% of nationwide are rail to trail conversions, like the Altos Creek Trail, where the rail line has been removed and has become a uh, bicycle or pedestrian trail. Over the years, and most recently, the, there's been a name change to the Friends of the Rail Trail, excuse me, Friends of the Rail Trail to Friends of the Rail and Trail. And quite honestly, they are no longer a trail ad advocacy group. They're a train advocacy group. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, you can address this if you like, but it's, Pretty clear that if you look at the RTC's plan for a bicycle path, bicycle and pedestrian path, and you compare it to the Greenway plan, it's a night and day difference in terms of the number of people that it serves, the people in general that it serves in terms of being ADA compliant, being designed for 8 to 80 year old use, so all aspects, all age groups, all you know, levels of use, versus something that ends up being essentially like West Cliff or the East Cliff path, where it's a multi use path. But it's not good for anyone. You know, it's not good for pedestrians. It's not good for people pushing strollers or walking dogs. And it's especially not good for transportation. And that's the biggest irony: is that the green, the uh, greenway, uh, is is designed primarily for bicycle transportation and pedestrian safety and bicycle safety. The RTC's plan is this all-in-one thing that is actually neither fish nor fowl. It's not good for bicycle transportation. It's not good for pedestrians. And as Gail's pointed out over and over, it's very likely not going to be a, a rail line. Even if it were a rail line, it would be a lousy rail line at that. So that's that's really the difference. Pete, if, if I could speak to uh, the Sierra Club, yeah, uh, the Ventana chapter. We just had our elections. Uh, the ballots were due in on January third. Uh, none of the uh, candidates spoke about the rail trail or transportation in Santa Cruz County on their statements. And additionally, none of them gave their phone numbers or emails that you could contact them. And additionally, if you went on to the, uh, onto our site and you looked for additional questions, what they couldn't print up on our ballot, they didn't address anything about um, the rail trail or transportation in Santa Cruz County. And so actually this has been a top down uh, motion by Mark Mesty Miller and Carisha and the other people that are on the uh, executive uh, board to point the Sierra Club membership in this direction. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been a ground up thing at all. Right. Right. Barry. You know, if, if I could just respond to Will's uh, comments, I, I don't believe the Friends of the Rail and Trail take money from the RPC. If anything, I think our donations have been used to fund some of the sections of the trail. And speaking to the history of the, the organization, it started in 2000, 2001, long before a rail line was about to be purchased. The, 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 the genesis of Friends of the Rail and Trail was to build a trail next to the tracks. It, it has always been that. And with and every year, year after year, then we buy the trip, we buy the rail line. It's like, yeah, let's keep doing it. Let's keep building the trail. We'll build it faster, we believe, uh, by not getting in, just, you know, without getting involved in, in carrying out the tracks. And obviously, we all disagree about that. But the Friends of the Rail and Trail has always been about a rail and trail. But it's just I, I disagree strongly. Okay. That's okay. Well, let's get another question. Let's, let's, well, thank you, Barry. Um, sure. Yeah. And I'd like to ask a couple of questions if I can. I think we Oh, I'm kind of new to this idea of the Greenway, but um, I've, I've been a volunteer with the Ecology Action for many years and the evolution of electric vehicles, and I've been very much involved in transportation um, coordination education with the Ecology Action, a lifetime member of Sierra Club, etc. Um, but I've really come over to this idea rather than the rail and trail. I think you have a great proposal. So one 
<clears throat> one thing, I don't think it's possible to build one trail that pedestrians and bikes use. And some of your pictures have shown that you've got bikes and people and wheelchairs all on the same trail. Are you proposing a dedicated bike route next to a dedicated pedestrian route? There's, so a, yeah, there's, there's, a, picture? there's a slide yeah. for that. It actually will show. Oh, I, I saw a slide of that, but I saw an awful other, a lot of other slides showing yeah. that. <laughs> so, so I wanted to make sure. Yeah. I'm only for this if you have a dedicated bike path and a dedicated pedestrian path, just as an example. I'm a big bike rider, I ride up to Sandpoint quite a bit, right. and there'll be two people and they'll take up the whole road and three people will yes. easily, and so I have a, I have a, I'm a friendly bike rider, i got a little bell to warn them because if you say on your left, they move left. So my question is, I'm hoping it's a dedicated pedestrian so and a dedicated Correct, and, and thank you for the question. And basically our plan is, and actually, we have a slide. So this is kind of a slide describing this. We want to build the best path that we can for each section. And so yes, we do want to put a buffer and separate people walking and jockeying from people walking and skateboarding, at Good. least through, through town. Like when you get out to the North Coast, you know, when you get out to some of the less populated areas, it might be more like a smaller path out there. To, you know, we, like we want to basically to build the best path that we can for what we can afford to do without doing um, in an environmentally sensitive way. So and the other question is, I think most people are confused by we know that we voted to uh, increase the sales tax or we're hoping to widen Highway 1. I don't agree with how they're doing it, but where are we at? I mean, I think I'm rather confused as you guys have come along. <laughs> Are we progressing with the fork concept, Friends of Rail and Trail? That is Are you coming in and trying to push them aside? So, what, so is, what is your grand scheme here so that we have an idea of really what's going on in this community in terms of... So there are kind of two things happening. I mean, the rail with trail is the plan of record. And it is the thing that the cities, you know, capitalists, you know, when they've all wanted to. When it was going to start? Yeah. Well, it is starting. They're starting to build the rail with trail plan. Segment seven, they want to break ground on that this year. You may have heard some of the num rumblings around New Leaf parking lot and, so, and that was what that is. This is the boardwalk to natural bridges section that's going yeah. to start first. The, um, yes. Not all the way to the boardwalk because I, it, I, yeah, I, it's, I just just, it's basically just seven. up to California and Bay because this whole second half is on hold because of the major retaining wall project. Between natural bridges and the boardwalk, basically, yes. Yes. So you're hoping to come in with enough support to say, hey, let's let's stop, let's rethink this, and would there be a vote? So, would so commissioners decide what to do? Segment seven is moving forward. We um, we try. It's been a confusing process, but but so the rail the trail building piece is one thing. The unified corridor study is another. So the unified corridor study which is currently ongoing. That's the study that's looking at the rail corridor, SoCal Freedom, and Highway 1 all together um, is in terms of sort of how we're going to use some of that Measure D money, how we're going to actually try to fix Santa Cruz County and get people moving. That's ongoing. Those results are due in at the end of um, 2018, so the end of this year, in December. And that study is looking at different uses for the rail corridor that include green, like Greenway's vision, basically. They're looking at um, some different scenarios, some include a train, some include a bus, and some include <coughs> just building a path on the corridor. And so that is ongoing, and we are hoping that there's a chance that perhaps there could be some fairness in that study. And it, the RTC is, you know, their plan of record is the train, and they definitely are very clearly biased in that direction. So some of what we as Greenway are trying to do is um, you know, by showing our support, by getting the yard signs up around town, and we do have yard signs here tonight, by getting bumper stickers on people's cars, by getting people to sign our petition and letting them know every month how much our petition is growing. I mean, we're showing our presence, we're going to all the meetings. There's a meeting next Thursday, yep. 9 a.m. Can I interrupt you yep. one second? Measure D was a coalition of organizations that passed that. Part of the reason that passed, and Greenway, and uh, Trail Now and others supported that was we were guaranteed a fair and open study of the corridor. So things have changed since the original plan. Now there is study being undertaken to find out the best use of that corridor. And that's why we're active now and hoping that that study comes out fair and open. 
And that's the big challenge, is trying to turn the RFTC, who is very trained prejudice, to saying, let's have a fair and open study for our community. So that's the big thing that's changed and why we're making a push now, because of Measure D and their study that will be coming out at the end of this year. Let me, let me mention another milestone that's coming up real quick, uh, just to comment about your question of why is Ecology Group a strong advocate of a rail trail? It's basically because they like to claim that the, the plan is the fastest way to get the trail is to stick to the plane. The fastest way, they keep trying to come up with reasons. So the next thing, the next yardstick coming up or the key milestone is the North Coast Rail Trail EIR. It's coming out next the month. Environmental Review. Environmental Review, that's coming out next month. We worked with the farmers and we advocate it for a third alternative. We have the trail next to the tracks going from Wilder up to Davenport. That's the rail trail plan. The second plan is a trail only. Greenway was advocating that. We were advocating it well. But the farmers had this trail going right through the center of their crops. It would have shut them down. So we worked with them, put a trail up along the ridge lines. Beautiful trail. Coming back, and it's a combination of a trail only plus a diversion. That report is coming out in, in March. <laughs> That report will show how f that it wasn't true that it, the fastest way is to leave the tracks because the federal government, the FHA, is handling that study. And they're already saying the truth, which is you can pull the tracks out in six months when you notify the Federal Railroad Administration. So to answer your question, why is Ecology Group and all of them supporting it is because they're trying to say the fastest way to get a trail is if you keep the tracks. And so the next ER are coming out, that's going to be a game changer. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for Brian has been working on this longer than anyone. I'd like to add one more thing. If you took the tracks out and just ground the stone there, you would get a gravel trail, compacted gravel trail, not just for free, you save about half a million dollars profit. That doesn't include the bridges, by the way. You'll still have to put the wood boards on that. But by pulling the tracks out, you have a, a trail free. And that's not the deluxe bike trail. But we just want you to know that that is a first step to however you could do it. It would be cheap and easy. And it would take six months to get rail banking approved if everybody agreed. Thanks, Carrie. I, I want to just make sure that I get a chance to let all of you know a little bit about what's happening right now that's actually kind of a new sort of level of urgency to this conversation. Um, I'm sure some of us are happy to stay um, afterward. I want, I'd like to close by 8, but if you have more questions, we're happy to kind of mill around and answer those afterward. Um, so, Iowa Pacific. So, we, when when the um, county purchased the when the RTC purchased the corridor, um, Union Pacific maintained the operating rights, and at that time they leased those rights out to Iowa Pacific to fulfill our Proposition 116 mandate for um, passenger rail. Iowa Pacific ran a Christmas train. Some of you may remember the Polar Express. It ran first on the west side. West side residents were not very fond of the horn, and so it switched to the east side. Capitola was really worried it was going to fall into their village, and so it, um, <laughs> when the RTC couldn't produce a current engineering study for their trestle, it was shut down, and it actually did not run this Christmas. So we've become, quite honestly, a little bit complacent because it's been really kind of out of sight, out of mind. The train has not been around, and it's been really easy to just sort of think, oh, you know, we're never going to have a train, we're going to get this trail built. Well, that all changed in December. So Iowa Pacific announced that they were pulling out, they are actually going bankrupt, they're leaving behind a $60,000 debt, thank you, which they do claim that they're going to pay, but they are going bankrupt. They've moved their oil tankers out of our Watsonville Slough. I hear they're now in the Adirondacks. Um, but Iowa Pacific's gone. Quickly over Christmas break, um, the RCC put out a request for proposals. Five proposals came in. Uh, they endorsed at their January 18th meeting a company called Progressive Rail out of Minnesota. So Progressive Rail submitted a proposal, it was a 60-page proposal for a tourist train. Um, not something that's going to help with gridlock. The RTC endorsed this proposal, the RTC staff endorsed the, this proposal. It was recommending a 10 to 20 year contract for a tourist train. 
that would run more, um, weekend mornings and evenings only. They were going to just kind of try it out, see if they could make it work. This company, mind you, was coming for the first time from Minnesota to the um, West Coast. Never been here before. So I read through that contract, and it's my job. So I find something on their one page of Watsonville freight plans, which seemed unusual to me. They, they, at the top, they, it was just a page of bullet points. We hope we can get the farmers to use the train. Let's move more construction material. At the bottom one was, we promise not to store any rail cars. The one above that said, I, um, Progressive Rail is poised to partner with Lansing Trade to construct a propane distribution terminal in Watsonville. Now, I don't know anything about this, but I wondered, you know, is that something Watsonville wants? So I do some research and I find um, a few stories of communities fighting similar facilities for environmental safety concerns. I continue researching and I find something that was astonishing to me. I, I learned about it for the first time. And it's something called preemption. So preemption is a historic railroad law, going back to the 1800s, it's a loophole basically, that allows a um, rail operator to partner with other companies and build things along rail lines as long as the rail operator can show that it will help them to make a profit. It's also used for other things. It basically gives rail operators a whole lot of leeway. And the oil and gas industry has found out about this. And all of a sudden, I don't know if you've been following national news, you probably have, oil and gas industry is booming in the United States. And they're looking at California, they're trying to figure out a way to move oil as fast as they can out of North Dakota, they can't move it fast enough. There are, I found maps on um, fracktrucker.org of potential oil routes through California. I found one actually showing our little branch line. Like, I don't know what this means, but I don't like it. And I found out that I have um, progressive rail actually has more, well, the CEO of Progressive Rail has much more experience in oil and gas than he does in trains. He has, he, I think, came to Progressive Rail in 2015 or 16. Prior to that, he had a 29-year career in the oil and gas Gail, industry. Can I, can I shorten it? What, what's happened is there was an energy company called Dakota Rail. Three of their executives are on the board of Progressive Rail. They're just shoving their oil mentality there, and it's coming this direction. And that's what she's really afraid of. So, well, it's not just that, though. It's really about this preemption thing. The truth is, whatever real operator is there, there's a chance that they could do stuff on those tracks that we don't want. And this could be, perhaps, the biggest reason ever to real bank this corridor. Because the truth is, it's an old freight corridor. It's not really that useful for passenger rail. We don't really need another tourist train. And it's just something to think about. So if you have an interest in um, mentioning your feedback on that or on anything else we talked about tonight, again, please email the RTC, info at seccrtc.org. There, there is a meeting. Well. There is a meeting of the RTC next Thursday morning. They don't make them easy to get to if you have a job, unfortunately. 9 a.m. at the County Building, 701 Ocean Street, 5th floor. We'd love to see you there. Um, and yeah, come. If you do come to one of these meetings, if you haven't been to a lot of public meetings, basically at the beginning of the meeting, you can say an open comment about anything that's not on the agenda. So um, that can be just a general support of Greenway, something like that. Oral it, communications. Yeah, and their oral communications. Thank you, Josh. Um, once the agenda comes out, we'll know if there's anything specific to Greenway. We don't have the advanced information right now, but once that comes out, we'll know if there's a specific item to talk to. And if you're on our mailing list, if you do sign our petition and you opt into our email, you'll get email notices about all of this. So we'll let you know when there's a meeting, so you can come out and join us at that meeting. We'll let you know um, any way, other ways that you can help the community. So please take home a yard sign, take home a bumper sticker, sign our petition, share our petition. And I'm, the, I'm Robert Stevens, and I'm on the Greenway board, and I'm the closer. I want to make sure there's nobody with a dying question, because it's 8 o'clock. Well, we want to try to get out of yeah. here. Um, but, yeah, I just want to make sure that there's not, somebody doesn't have one last important question that you really want to ask. I see two hands. Would people want to stay for, like, a few more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's answer both these questions. My question is, if you pull the RTC board, where are they? Very good question. I would say maybe there's 12 RTC members. There's probably about three on our side and some others waffling. It's kind of up in the air. I've noticed about politics, the first rule is don't ever get in front of the lead on anything. You want to cover yourself and get reelected. So every time you ask a politician where they stand, it's kind of which way is the community looking. 
And that's one reason it's so important for all of you to be very vocal. And you had a question. Uh, yes, so I was wondering in regards to the, um, let's see, let, into the proposals that are possible for the rail corridor. Let's say we do get uh, trail only becomes the preferred solution. Now, okay. uh, first part of the question. Would Greenway steward that and provide um, consultation and construction to start on that? And if so, what would Greenway do after that's done? Would there be rally for more of a Greenway, or would it be disabandoned because of its mutual well, benefit corporate status? Well, well, our main goal is to create a Greenway, which would be a spine through our county with all the feeders from schools and parks feeding into that. So any money that's saved, we would like to see put in to the infrastructure that would support the Greenway. Uh, our goal really is to go out of business because this is a tough task. I always say this is like David versus Goliath, and that's really why we need everybody's help. We need you to talk to your neighbors because we're dealing with a large bureaucracy that's kind of set in their ways. And so it's very important that you take our signs. I think you're seeing them all over town as you move around. Tell your neighbors, get involved, sign our petitions. And I wanted to remind people of one other thing. We're having a trail walk on the uh, Saturday at 10 o'clock over by the first alarm building on McGregor. There's a street right there. We're going to meet there at 10. And if you don't make that, go out and look at the rail corridor anywhere in your community and just draw a line from the center of the rail out 25 feet. And that's how much space the trail will need to take out. And see if you can fit that in there. Keeping the rails in the center where they are, go out 25 feet and see where what you think. And then also imagine this four and a half foot fence kind of dividing all the neighborhoods. So I really appreciate everyone coming out, everybody's energy and thoughts. Thank you. Uh, thank you.